A few weeks ago, I made a video talking about Easter eggs in Python, and one of those was a From Done the Future Easter egg that talked about the idea that Python is never going to have braces in it. But it turns out that you can actually use Python with braces with a little help from an external library. A few years ago, someone made a project called Python, which is available on the Python package index, which allows you to use Python with braces and not having to worry about indentation. So in this video, we're gonna be having a look at that and seeing if you can genuinely get rid of colons and indentations altogether. Of course, if you like the video at any point, then consider liking it to let me know and maybe subscribing if you wanna see more videos like this. If you're feeling particularly generous, you can become either a member or a patron using the links in the description below. But with all that out of the way, out with indentation and in with braces. To get started with Python, first you need to install it. And thankfully that's pretty easy because you can just do it with pip. So you could do pip install Python. Uh, although actually using the correct command would be good. I already have it installed. But you can see how we're using version 0 0.8 today. And I imagine you probably will as well because this package hasn't been updated since 2018. So I feel like a lot of people have heard about this recently because I've heard it come up quite a few times. Um, but this isn't a new thing. This hasn't been updated for about six years. Um, so yeah, worth keeping that in mind. And to start using it, you need to create a file. Uh, you don't have to use the by extension if you don't want to, but that's just what's recommended in the docs. So that's what I'm doing. And I'm going to show you a really simple example. And then I'm going to go over a bit more of a, a complicated one and show you how to convert between the two. So I'll go to the example in there, read me for this. So we have a print message and you'll see kind of immediately that there's a bit of a problem with this in that you can't have like code linting on while you're doing this because of course if you use Python, it's going to complain about you using curly brackets uh, instead of, well, colons and indentations and stuff. Uh, so that's one thing you are going to have to get used to. Thankfully on VS Code at least, if you have plain text, if I just do this... If you do curly brackets like that, it will actually automatically indent for you, which does put into question how useful Python actually is if you are using an editor. But, you know, we can we can skip aside that for now. And then we do 4i in, whoops, in range uh, num of times. And you do get a little bit of autocomplete. You get like sublime style autocomplete. Uh, Python is awesome like that and then we could do the semicolon you don't have to but uh it's just a little bit of flair so if name equals main and do the i almost did a colon there print message and then 10 and then like that this is our uh, really simple program in order to run it we could just do python and then the name of the file so script.by and you'll see it runs so what it does is it transpiles the, the Python code into Python code and then runs that Python code in the Python interpreter. And if you want to see uh, what the code is that it's made, you could do python-c uh, python and then script.py. And this will simply compile the code rather than run it. You could open script.py and you can see what it's done. So by default, there's a lot of white space around. I think the way it like gets rid of it, it, it like just you know clears these lines out and replaces this with colons and then it gets it actually gets rid of semicolons weirdly even though they use semicolons in the thing uh but yeah you can see there's not a huge amount of changes that have taken place it's mainly just pretty much find and replace to be completely honest and we'll see examples of the implementation of this not exactly being the most complex uh, a little bit later, but I do want to go over a few other things first. So we have Python dash H and then we can see the full thing. So we can keep the generated Python files. I believe what that does is if I do this, it will run it and then it will output the file. Yeah, there you go. So it's basically compile and run, uh, which is a kind of a nice thing to have. And then you got, yeah, you got par there. You got some other like verbose things. Lower true, what's that? Add support for lowercase. Oh, true for, oh, so you can add support for lowercase true and false. Okay, that's cool. I didn't know you could do that until this. And then you could also run it with Python 2 if you want by using dash 2 or, or double dash Python 2. And if you're compiling and you don't want your file to be called, you know, the file name.py, you can also supply a dash O um, to compile it too. So if you want to give it a custom name, you can do that as well. Uh, so that's all the basics of Python. I have made uh, a little guessing game using it. So you can see I've gone kind of a you know a little bit 
full or a little bit extra i guess i don't know what you want to call it but i've done kind of everything so i've done the semicolons and done the brackets and i've done uh using brackets around if statements or while statements and all that actually i could probably do while true there but i didn't know it was a thing uh and it's just, this is just like a really simple uh game so you you know guess a number between one and ten with three tries and it uses various while loops and conditionals and while else's and stuff like that to do it and if you run this uh, it works, nope, Python, it works fine, or it doesn't, <laughs> of course it doesn't, why doesn't that work, okay, so this is one of the problems I was having earlier, I thought I'd fixed it, but I guess not, so the error, uh, the issue we're getting is an intertation error expected an intertation block after the else statement on line 32, which is this here, if you look at the, the compiled code, we can see that it hasn't compiled this properly at all, and I'm not entirely sure why it hasn't properly compiled it. I think it's something to do with this in here. Um, although actually, no, it's the it's, well, it's clearly in the, in the indentations, but I think that's something to do with it. So what I was doing before, I did try and do something like this to see how competent it was, and I did something like this as well to see if it could handle this because uh, I didn't know how it was implemented. If you run that now, then I will get the same thing. If I comment, can I comment that out for a second? Uh, no. <laughs> Plain text, the comment thing doesn't work. Okay, fine. Um, but yeah, if we do this like this, oh, I can probably compile it and you'll see. Uh, we can see that it just, yeah, completely breaks. Um, so it is very much a try, not a try, except... Um, what am I calling it? Find replace job, where it just replaces open parenthesis or open uh, curly brackets with colons, and you can actually see that's what it's, what it's done here in the uh, in the string as well. And then it replaces the uh, or just like removes uh, the closing brackets completely. The problem is it doesn't seem to be very smart about how it does this. So the way I managed to get it to work before is by doing that. And then, well, obviously you get doing this and that just kind of worked previously. Um, so if I do, the thing is I can't even do this the string dot format. Uh, if so, if I get rid of this and then if I do I and then close that and then brackets number like that, that should be a bit better. Oh, and I've got to close the thing, you know, that would probably help. That should be a bit better. It should be able to handle that part. Oh, and it looks as though it's actually going to be run fine now. If I do that, there we go. It runs fine. Now. I think it was this string formatting thing. Yeah, so f strings are off the table. I did manage to get it to work once with f strings. It was working previously. Uh, I don't know why it's not anymore. Before our game, oh, I won. That was simple. <laughs> yes, I do want to try again. Too low, too high. Yeah, yeah, one again. And then if we do like, um, hello, we can see that it's an invalid guess. Uh, okay, I'm gonna like not win one. <laughs> Actively trying not to win. There we go. So no more guesses, the number is three. If you do it again, so it all works fine. It's all able to run okay. Obviously, the, the exact code isn't formatted. It, yeah, it doesn't get rid of like it doesn't. It's not really like a C style thing, it is more just brackets. You do get a lot of white space because of that. But you can see that you do have to take care when moving things from, from Python to Python. I wonder now, now i fix fixed that. Will this work? I want to do it one more time. Oh, it does. I think it actually is going to work now. Okay, there you go. So you can do slightly more advanced things, provided that your F string expressions aren't breaking everything. So yeah, you are limited to this, which is a bit unfortunate. But you know, it is what it is, I suppose. I also have not tried it with a dictionary. Um, let's see how it handles this. It might not actually handle it at all. Uh, one and then two, two, something like that. Just a really simple one. And it, it, it breaks. You can't do dictionaries. Oh, that's really unfortunate, actually. Uh, I suppose you, you can do dictionaries because you can do dict one equals one, two equals two, and then that will work fine. Uh, but then you have to do a function call, and it's not really readable. 
Wow, yeah, I didn't even try and test it. Yeah, that's not good, is it? <laughs> I did not even try and do that before this. And, uh, hmm, yeah, that's an interesting one you have to keep in mind. So you can't use f-strings. You can't use dictionaries in their raw form. But at the very least, you don't have to worry about indentation. And yeah, just to prove, I've uh, done this here. I've unindented this here. If you run it, it compiles and it's indented over. So the other thing I wanted to show you in this video was converting from a Python file to a Python file because that's also possible. So I have this conversion.py, which is exactly the same thing. I just wanted to name it uh, distinctly. So uh, <laughs> it was kind of obvious what was going on on the sidebar. But if you use py to buy, and this is also available uh, when you pip install Python. So it exposes two separate commands. And then I don't know if I loaded the help for this. Okay, there's there's not much you can do. You can kind of input something and that's about it. Uh, so if you do pi to by and then conversion.py, we will then get this conversion.by file out. And you can see it's more or less done what we wanted it to do. So you can see, yeah, the, the brackets around if statements or while statements are optional. The semicolons are optional. I guess it just treats them the same. Actually, no, it doesn't treat them the same even because it gets rid of them when you translate from Python to Python. Uh, but yeah, Python can handle, uh, you know, semicolons just fine. So I suppose it doesn't really bother. But it just puts stuff within within curly brackets. It doesn't kind of make use of more advanced syntaxes, which is sort of annoying. But I get, yeah, I suppose it does it based on the white space within the file rather than anything else. Again, probably another find and replace job. Uh, to be honest, I haven't actually looked at the source code, so it might, I might be not giving the author enough credit. But uh, yeah, that does seem like that's what it is to me. Let me know in the comments what you think of this. I think it's probably a little bit too limited to really use, though I don't think it was really intended to be used in production. I think it's just a bit of fun. You know, I've, I've sort of been ripping it apart a bit, but I, I don't think it's a, a serious attempt to actually change the dynamics of Python. I think it's just a fun little experiment and a fun little cool thing to say, hey, you can use Python with braces, uh, which is cool in another sense. Um, but yeah, it, it has its issues for sure. I'd like to say a huge thank you to my amazing patrons and members on screen now, especially Mazard Rosherman III for being so generous. If you want to get fooled, despite the fact that it's not April Fool's Day, then you can watch last week's video where I successfully pulled the wall over some people's eyes, which I'm very happy about, and also got a significantly lower like to dislike ratio than normal, which <laughs> I was expecting. Um, but thankfully it wasn't too bad. So you can go watch that if you want to be fooled, or if you want a more serious video, you can watch the video before that, where I talked about those Easter eggs, like I mentioned at the start of the video. And I will see you in the next video for whatever we do next.